Hello and welcome to this tutorial on the config backup and restore feature in Glueware introduced in Glueware 5.3. Let's get signed into this Glueware instance and take a look. So I'm going to navigate into a org that I'm going to be exercising this feature in. Just to start out, I want to talk about what backup and restore is and why Glueware implemented it. So let's navigate into device manager. And prior to this feature, Glueware had this capability in just a different way. Glueware takes what are known as snapshots, which are config snapshots. So when you, when you select one or more devices and you execute a discovery, along with that discovery, a snapshot is taken. A snapshot is a capture of the configuration. That snapshot is used in config drift and audit, but let's take a quick look if I double click on any device and I go to the view of snapshot, it's going to show me my latest snapshot, which if you leave it as default, one of the items in that snapshot is going to be your standard running configuration. So in this case, it's Cisco and it's doing a show run and it captures that. So before this feature existed, Glueware has always had the ability to snapshot your configuration and it, in Device Manager here, it stores the latest snapshot. The other thing I'll point out is in Config Drift and Audit in your device view, every snapshot taken, if I double click on that same device, every that the snapshot taken, if I view the snapshot again, I can view it here. I can also view a comparison view. So this is where you have the ability, I can navigate again back to standard snapshot and I can compare historical captures, and this will tell me exactly what changed you know, between the snapshots. So the notion of a config backup was always in the Glueware product in that you have historical backups in Config Drift and Audit, and you have your latest snapshot available in Device Manager. When it comes to restore, previously, you would have navigated into config modeling and you would just reprovision the device. So since Glueware kind of had these capabilities and let's navigate back to device manager, why would we add this latest config backup and restore? And it's really for two main reasons. One is that Glueware is replacing legacy systems that our prospects or customers are using, which is doing what I would call this basic backup config backup and restore functionality. So they essentially want like for like replacement. The other reason is that when you look at config modeling, config modeling enables you to model your configuration. And then at any point, Glueware can regenerate that configuration and restore it. However, when customers start using Glueware, they may not be using config modeling for all their devices. They may not be modeling all their features and you know, they might just be using Glueware for other purposes. So because they may not necessarily have config modeling or modeled all their features, they still would like backup and restore. So that's why it's added. So let's talk about uh, how it's implemented. So let's take a look at how this feature is implemented. And to do so, we're gonna start with some changes in the settings. So let's go into settings in the org settings. And one of the first things you're gonna to need to have enabled to run backup and restore is this is a role-based access enabled capability. So here in my role-based access, I'm going to edit my test drive user just to show you this. But uh, what I wanted just to highlight, if you're running the test drive, we are enabling these capabilities so you can follow along and try this yourself. So let's go ahead and edit the test drive user role-based access uh, capabilities. As I scroll down here in my role-based access, you're going to see a new category here called device backup and restore. So per role-based access, in this case, it's a test drive user capability. We have enabled the run and manage device backups, run device restore, and configure post restore commands. So all of those are enabled. So when logging in with that type of role-based access and control, I will be able to use that feature. Another quick thing to mention is there is also a change in, uh, or an addition in data retention. So in data retention, we have a new category called device backups. 
So when we are executing the backup, which I'm going to talk in detail about, that file, those files that we are capturing as backups are part of device backups. And you can specify the count and number of backups stored per device. So that, that is configurable. At, if you have a lot of devices and you're backing up all your configs, you're going to want to be conscious about the size it takes to back that up, and it could affect your disk space. So with that, let's navigate back into Device Manager. Okay, so here we are back in the Device Explorer here in Device Manager, and um, I'm going to turn off the Sites view and just consolidate back down to my Device Explorer grid. So one of the things you're going to see in the Device Explorer grid are new columns available for backup. So you're going to see backup by, backup on, backup status, last successful on, and last successful name, as well as re restored on, restored by, progress. So I'm going to turn these views on so you can see all the new columns available in the grid. Uh, along with that, you can sort by that, those types of things as well. So if I wanted to see the backup by status, it's going to filter my devices and show me that, you know, in this case, these last, these eight devices had had successful backups or completed backups. This one is blank. It's a non-supported operating system, which we'll cover. Scrolling over on the grid here, you're going to see, you know, backup by, backup on. So you have a lot of new detailed information in the grid. One quick side note is that all of that information and those properties are available in dashboards. I'm not going to be spending time in dashboards, but you can create a new dashboard. You can create graphs and tables that include information about backup. So that is supported in dashboards as well. I was beginning to cover that a backup, as it's newly implemented, is different from a snapshot. However, they are important and they are related. When I execute a discovery in Device Explorer or if, if a snapshot is running from Drift, let's take these devices here. If I execute a discovery, I'm going to execute a snapshot. A snapshot is primarily used for Drift. So a couple things about it. One is we are capturing it and exposing it as a text file. That's why, again, if I double click on this and look at what the snapshot looks like, I see it as a viewable config file. This is not a binary or some other type of image. We are getting that configuration, storing it. We wrap it in JSON, but we're presenting it here. The other component about this is that it is redacted. There are certain things that are redacted out of this file so that we can execute drift on it. We don't want false positives on a drift. Every time we run to capture, we don't want to say it's drifted. So there are, are things that are removed out of this config file that enable us to show it cleanly as well as execute drift on it, but not have to have it uh, causing false positive. One last piece of information that's important here is in Glueware 5.2, we implemented customization on discovery and capture. So if you go into your settings in your org and you view the discovery and capture status, you're going to see the ability to add custom capture commands per OS. So if I look at my iOS, uh, I have several new custom capture commands turned on. But if I go in and edit any one of these, what I want to see and what I do recommend if you're using Backup and Restore is that you still do enable and run the Glueware standard commands. Glueware standard commands are running things that are capturing the configuration for the snapshot. So if you were to turn this off, we won't have a standard config capture. That's up to you. But if you're going to be using it in correlation with Backup and Restore, we highly recommend you do let Glueware run the standard commands to capture and run that running config. OK, so back to Device Manager. What you're going to see now is in the actions bar here, if I select, uh, let's go ahead and select all these devices because I do want to show this as a demonstration. So I'm selecting all the devices available here in my view, which, can, which are Cisco and, and Juniper devices. But if I look at the operating systems, it's iOS, NXOS, and Junos. So 
If I execute the backup, which again is a new option, your actions bar here. So this is the action to backup devices. I'm gonna go ahead and execute that. What I'm gonna see here is a veil pops up. You have the option to execute the backup on demand right here. You can schedule the backup or you can run it or trigger it from a network RPA workflow. Also the Glue API, you could trigger it from a third-party API call to run the backup. So those are all the options in terms of running it. When you perform the backup, it is a good option and, a, and a probably a best practice to go ahead and execute a new snapshot along with it. And the reason you want to do this is that a backup file is not a text file. It's, it's raw. It's a raw image. So it could be a binary. It really depends on the vendor and the operating system. But because it's not a text file, you can't view the backup itself. But if you have a corresponding capture, which a uh, snapshot, then you can look at that and assess. If you want to do a pre-assessment of what you want to look at the config before you back it up, you would want a snapshot to go along with it. The other piece I'll highlight here is that this capability was first released in Glueware 5.3, and only specific operating systems were supported in that release, and then additional operating systems will be added over time. So I currently have one unsupported device, which is NXOS. This will be this is planned to be added in, in our next release, but um, unsupported operating systems will be skipped on the backup operation. So let's go ahead and start the backup. So as the backup is running, you're going to see this veil that's giving me a status similar to you've seen in other applications. So let me go ahead and hide that status. What I do wanna double click on and, and dive into a bit further is I'm gonna, and, and you can see that these devices are running here and the only one not running here is the, the NXOS device because it's not supported. And if I scroll over to my backup status, you're going to start to see what's happening in terms of activity on the new backup action that's been taken. So I'm clicking on this device here, my Pod V4, my Podmore spoke one, and I want to look at the log. Most users of Glueware appreciate how deep and detailed the logs are, but basically you're going to see that that there is a capture job happening because we said. Uh, do the device capture. So that's going to be performing a standard capture and you can look at the logs while that's that's running. And again, some of these may be queuing up, but so this is invoking the capture and that, that action is going to happen. What I do want to show in the log is as the backup is operating, you're going to see that detail as well. And as I was mentioning, a backup is not the same as a snapshot. A backup is going to log into the device and then de depending on that vendor's best practices, we are going to implement backup and the corresponding restore. Typically, we are logging into the device and we are copying the running config to Glueware. We store that in our database as a binary and then we are using that image upon the restore. So that's a very important uh, note to cover is that this is not just the same as SSHN, do uh, show run and um, popping that CLI and then you know pushing the CLI back on the prompt. It's not taking that action. So let's go ahead and I'll stop speaking here and wait for this action to complete. Okay, so now we can see that the snap, the capture job completed and then the backup job was first queued and then is running. So as I double click in again into this backup job, you can see very transparently the exact actions that Glueware is doing to execute the backup. So you get a nice detailed log about what's happening. And when we run the backup, we are running the device discovery, the action where we're looking at details of that device, understanding the serial number, the op running operating system, the SKU, all of that. And then we're going to be performing the back, the action to back up that image. Okay, so the backup job has completed here. And I just want to highlight just a couple quick things that we completed discovery, we execute the backup action, 
we are using keys in terms of looking at the file, the file size, and we are also testing uh, the restore just so that prior to a restore that, that the restore action could happen successfully. We are validating checksums and uh, the test of the restore is successful. And then we are not executing the change and the backup is successful. So when I go back to activity here, I have all that detail in my log. What I wanna point out now is that with backup and restore, there's a new view within your device details here. Here I am in my device details and I am able to view all of the backups that are, have been executed on this device. And I'll just highlight because we are running device discovery, we are capturing the OS that was running at the time, the version, the serial number, the SKU. Now it's come up where the question is, you know, if the OS version has changed or if a device swap had to occur and the serial number has changed or the SKU changes, will Glueware still execute the upgrade? And as long as the OS has not changed, as long as it's still in the OS family, you will get a warning, but it will allow you to proceed with a, a restore action. So if, if for some reason you had to swap one device for another, so the serial number changes, we still will allow you to do that. But what you can see on these is that the captures have been completed, the size is there, and then the checksum is there as well. What we're also going to do is, if you are running a backup on a periodic basis, like daily, uh, you know, within every 24 hours, we are not going to be storing all those duplicate images. If it is a duplicate image based on size and checksum, these line items, will just be a reference back to this image. So if, th if these two are exactly the same, if I restore from this one, or if I have 10 more of these that are all the same because nothing's changed over 10 days, when I restore, I'm, o I'm only storing one of these because they haven't changed, and I will still, I will restore from that image. So now you've taken a backup, and let's say you want to restore. The restore image is from here. So the actions that you have here are you can restore or you can, you can delete. If you have not taken a corresponding snapshot, the snapshot view will be grayed out. Meaning you, you cannot view this image because it, is it a raw, it is a raw formatted file, could be a binary, so you can't view it in text. If you've taken a corresponding snapshot, again, which is recommended, if you do want to view what's in that file prior to executing a restore, then you do want to take that corresponding snapshot and then you can view the snapshot and this will show you the corresponding snapshot file with that backup. Once you're viewing the file as a snapshot, if you want to execute the restore from this configuration, we also present the restore button here. If you click that, it's going to navigate you back here to your backups view, and then it's going to highlight that particular corresponding snapshot, and then here you can go ahead and execute your restore. When you execute your restore, currently, in again, with the 5.3 release, you execute a restore on a single device basis. In the future, we may be introducing a no the notion of a plan, like we do in OS Manager, where you have a plan of many devices. In this particular version, because we are not yet supporting multi-device, you execute a restore on a, a per-device basis. When you execute that restore, you have, again have the option to capture a snapshot. Again, it's recommended as a best practice, but not mandatory. And you could also set the new snapshot as a default configuration. This again is the case that when you are restoring a configuration, you don't necessarily want it to then cause a false positive in drift. If you are restoring a config and you're restoring it to a known good state, you probably would wanna also make it your default configuration that from then on, you are comparing your captures to that as well. So I would recommend you typically check that and then you can start your restore. So again, we can hide the veil and we can go into the device log. And when that job is running, we, are, we will see all the details here. So as part of this job, there's a capture and then it will initiate the backup job. So the restore job is here in the log and I can double click on that log to begin to see the details. 
Okay, so I can see here my restore job is completed. I just want to highlight again that you know the operation Glueware is doing in this version, in this particular restore, it is Cisco IOS specific, but Glueware is not just SSHing in and pushing a config back in. We're following the vendor's supported capability to restore configuration. So in this case, we're copying the file on, we're then, we're replacing the startup config, and then we're, we're using the, the Cisco supported action to restore a configuration. So you're, you're going to see that, you know, here's the copy, it's copied, then we're going to be activating. So Cisco supports a config replace functionality. So we execute the config replace, which is kind of a form of a rollback. And then we're doing a show configuration ID detail. This is verifying it. And then we execute a final uh, CRC check and the restore function is completed. So just want to show you that, you know, it, it is a pretty robust and detailed action that's happening that will allow you to execute backup and backups and restore. So the last thing I'll mention is um, I'll just navigate into Network RPA very quickly here. And that if you wanted to create a workflow that the workflow is executing a backup, here we are in Network RPA. I'm going to create a new workflow and just call it backup. Next, I'll make the, I'll just keep this private since I'm not currently sharing this workflow with others. And here I am in my editor. And all I would do is drag and drop in the backup task. Now, typically before I do that, I'm going to do a filter target. And in my example here, I may filter on, I'll add a rule to say name, it contains, I'll just do my spoke routers, apply. So I can say name contains, so I'm filtering for my name contains spoke and I'm gonna execute a backup. And then I'll have that here. So all I do is, you know, apply that these tasks are configured. I can save this. I perform a validation, which checks uh, all the pre-checks that this workflow is configured properly. I can run a test, execute, and go to my activity. And my activity here, I, I see my backup is running. And then on a per device basis or per target basis, I can see that these are running. So all of my devices that matched my filter, which was uh, the key that the name contains spoke, those are executing a backup and that job will run to completion. But if I run over, if I navigate here back to device manager in my device view, I can see that the backups are taking place right now. And I, I can see also that this job of my restore completed. So if we navigate back into spoke one here and I look at my backups view, I can see that all of the action that has happened today, I performed a backup, there was also a restore, and then upon restore, it takes a backup. So you could back up out of that restore if you need to. And then I just ran from running it, putting that backup action into my network RPA workflow. So that concludes this tutorial on backup and restore. If you're running this within the test drive, again, you can follow along and try out this feature set. Thanks for your time and attention.